Hi there. Welcome once again to another edition of Smoke Signals. I'm your host, Ethan Morris. Um, I brought you a video <clears throat> last night about some of the folks that we lost um, in late uh, 2022 and here in 2023 already. And um, also mentioned some shows I'm attending or have attended. And um, hope you enjoyed that as well as some new additions to my record collection. I um, want to talk a little bit today about just a quick rant, if you will, about things in the music world that I would like to see less of um, in the coming year, in 2023. I know we're already in March, but I've gotten a little bit behind with some of my videos. So um, <clears throat> just wanted to talk um, about a couple of things. Some of these have been going on for a while. Some of these are um, nothing new at all. Uh, they've been going on for quite, quite a, a while, and some of these have gotten worse as time has gone by, um, and so I just wanted to address those. Um, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is kind of a little bit of an obscure one. Um, this has to do with, um, especially in the rock world, you know, because I mostly focus on rock music on this show. Um, rock bands in general, you see a lot in hip-hop um, and in and country music and a lot of other genres where artists will collaborate. There's a lot of camaraderie. Um, they work together, they name drop each other, they talk about how they admire each other. That happens a lot in, um, you know, other genres of music. Not so much in rock music, you know, I just don't hear a lot of times, and this goes throughout the history of rock music, when you see interviews or you read reviews, interviews rather, and uh, you hear bands talking, it's almost like they're prevented from talking about other bands. Um, they don't want to highlight other bands, they don't want to boost other bands up, and I don't know what that's about. Um, I, I wish I saw a little bit more of, you know, why is it I never hear Ty Siegel talking about, you know, Ozzy's new album? <laughs> or why is it you never hear the members of Metallica talking about the OCs who are also from California, you know, like up and coming San Francisco, California bands? Um, and those may not be the best examples because of genre differences and tastes or whatever. But um, anyway, that's just, that's just a thing um, that I... Um, um, it kind of bugs me, and I just wish I saw we saw more unity, especially these days in 2023 when rock music is, at least in the charts and you know, and popular music is under such strains. Um, another thing, this is kind of an easy no-brainer: vinyl prices. What is the deal with these vinyl prices? I mean, when I go out to a record store, which is very rare, I usually buy most of my stuff online, and I prefer buy used records because they have some character, but also because they're more affordable. Um, I understand a lot of collectors want to get the latest edition when it's a new double release album with um, all sorts of inserts and extra records and stuff. And that's cool. I understand that. That I can understand spending 30, 40 bucks for. But $35 just for a reprint of a classic album, it's just, an, it's just a record. Um, and, you know, you may, and they may say, oh, it's the 180 gram, um, gram or whatever, you know, heavy duty. But, uh, you know, $35 is a lot of money for one record um so uh, that is something that's just gotten out of hand and never mind going to a record store if you go to somewhere like walmart or if you go to a retail store of any kind you're going to see vinyl prices even higher sometimes forty dollars and it's like wow you know there's a repressing of metallica's ride the lightning or Jimi hendrix are you experienced that's great but do i want to spend that much on one record when i could just go online or go to a used store and get it for five or ten bucks maybe 20 at the most uh gotta gotta cut that out that's ridiculous especially when you think about the resurgence of vinyl in the in the last couple of years um drunk people at shows i mean i know it kind of comes with the territory a lot of people are going to be saying ethan come on you go to a show you're going to have at least one drunk i understand you're going to have one or two but when you go to a show, you're there to enjoy the music, enjoy the experience, and you've got some idiot falling all over themselves, making a fool of themselves, bumping into people, starting fights. They're really not there to see the music. And there needs to be something a little bit more stringent done about that. I mean, if you're there to goof off and make a scene and be seen, why aren't you on the stage, you know? And um, I think that the security and stuff, you know, I don't. I'm not a huge fan of security in general, but there needs to be something a little bit more strict about it. If you're not there to see the show, just go on and leave, you know, because we're not here to see you. Um, and that's just something that I think has gotten worse over the years. Um, some, some people may disagree with me. 
Next thing I would like to see less of in the music world is covers. Bands, artists doing covers of old material. Has every song from the 70s, 80s, and 90s been covered now? Now the trend is 90s songs being covered. Like every song from The Cure to The Beatles to Bonnie Raitt, I've heard it all covered. And, and, and I'll be in a coffee shop or in a music store and I'll hear this song come on and go, oh, I know that. What, that sounds familiar. And it's because it's a cover of a song that you've heard a thousand times by the original artist. And sometimes it was only recorded 20 or 30 years ago. It wasn't that long ago, even less sometimes. And a covers used to be a special thing. If a band did a cover, it was like, wow, listen, this such and such band is doing this cover. Um, Guns N' Roses doing Live and Let Die. Wow. And, um, yeah, we're just, it's too easy now. And it makes me think, is the songwriting suffering? You know, is that part of the problem? Bands, you know, artists can't write songs, so they're doing all these covers. I don't know. That's my opinion. But anybody can do a cover, I think. And then the final thing I'd like to see less of in uh, music in 2023 is the interviews, the interview process. Interviewers in general, music interviewers, are not good at what they do. I'm sorry. When I see an interview with a band, I want to know what you were thinking when you wrote that song on that album, what was going on in the band, what was going on in music at that time, how did you feel that you fit in with this genre and this era of music? Not how bad off on drugs your drummer was, and tell us all about that. And a lot of times musicians are bad at interviews too, because there's just a lot of yes, no, I don't know. They, they just can't do it. Um, but it's the interviewer's job to really make that interview come alive and pull those good questions out. I don't want to hear about the drama. I don't want to hear about how the band broke up, how they were fighting. I'm not interested in that. I want to know what you were thinking, what the process was for writing such and such song at a such and such time on such and such album. So anyway, that's um, my little rant for today. Um, it's uh, Tuesday, March 7th, and you're watching Smoke Signals. This is just another little, this is a quick video. Um, I'll have a new video coming out probably later in the week. I'm gonna be doing my favorite live albums, my favorite second albums, and I really re need to redo my favorite albums of all time. Um, because that was about two years ago when I did that video. Um, but anyway, have some other stuff coming up soon. We'll see you soon. Thanks.